Hey y'all, it's Chimdi. So I'm coming to you makeup free because I wanna prove my point, which is that trauma healing ages you in reverse. It's one of the superpowers that come with healing is you literally take years and years off your face. Now, we're not gonna pretend that I haven't always looked cute. <laughs> We're not gonna engage in lies. However, <laughs> I noticed this when I was looking back at the video I made in 2021. I looked tired. And so I wanna talk about a couple of the different ways that healing shows up in your physical transformation and your energetic transformation. And of course, like the practical process of doing the healing if you don't have the resources to like enroll in a two year trauma healing program like I did. But first, I do wanna do my two step <laughs> YouTube makeup routine which consists of a lip gloss, Laneige, and we're gonna do this Essence Princess Slash Mascara, and that is the entirety of my YouTube routine. Now we are ready. And I wanna talk some more about products. Maybe there's part of you thinking, well, no, it's about the products you use, Tindy. Like, what do you use to wash your face? What do you use to moisturize? And this speaks to one of the major processes that I had that then did contribute to me having a brighter complexion. I was actually looking at research for Merit Beauty because they sent me some stuff. And because I don't wear a lot of makeup, I didn't really know how to apply it effectively. And so I was on YouTube, thank God for YouTube, and a woman was talking about how she makes her makeup look so good. And she essentially said the key was to moisturize. Now this is, <laughs> this is such a straight, forward, basic, common piece of knowledge, it sent me into a spiral because I was like, why didn't I know this? And not just know intellectually, we can know a lot of things in our head. When we know something, our whole body knows and our frequency emanates it. We embody it. We don't have to effort or try because it's just a knowing. We know that when we're hungry, we should eat food. We don't have to be like, wow, I'm just confused. Like my stomach hurts and I don't know what to do. We no, and so we just do it. We don't need to be told to do it right. I don't understand how this feels so luxurious. Just like eating outside in the sunshine with a gentle breeze. I'm like, I feel like the richest woman alive. <laughs> I'm like, this is so nice. And so of course I've heard that you should have a morning routine and a nighttime routine and this and that, but it never landed in me as knowledge. And the process that I went through for it to actually connect was to connect to the experience growing up in my home and how different difficult it was to not have it modeled for me because my family life didn't support that kind of like, all right, I'm gonna sit you down, young chimney, and I'm gonna talk to you about how you do your morning routine and here are the different products we use. I grew up in a way that was very independent, you know, and I learned to take care of myself from a very young age. So a lot of my healing has been around relaxing and allowing in love and allowing in support and allowing in advice and best practices. And so because of this woman's YouTube video, that's why I'm such a proponent like my coaching is about helping creators create and I focus on youtubers and the reason why is because I have been so blessed <laughs> by the wisdom that people have shared on YouTube. So I want every single person who feels like they have some wisdom and some insight to share to do it because I know what it means to be blessed by that. And so I watched this woman's video and I started Googling moisturizers and cleansers and all that. And I picked literally the common one, CeraVe, hydrating facial cleanser for normal to dry skin. And I picked this normal ass <laughs> moisturizer. It's the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream. And the main difference is that I've tried products in the past but I've never stuck to it because to really stick to something speaks to your capacity like there's so many people speaking of YouTube right there's so many people who start something but they're not able to actually keep showing up for themselves they're not able to be consistent and to be consistent is to understand in a very deep way that what you are doing matters that it makes a difference and even if in the beginning your audience is small or you're not seeing the results you want you know, not you think, you know that if you stick to it, you are gonna get the results you want. Because I didn't have a true understanding of the way things could be better for me. Like that's why we do anything in our life, right? It's because we want our lives to be a little bit better. If you don't believe that's even possible, you're not gonna do any of the work and do any of the effort because you don't really believe that it's true. So the process of doing this healing work allows you to be like, oh wow, things can actually be better. Like I have the capacity to create a new life for myself. It can be as simple as in my morning routine and washing my face. <laughs> and it can be as big as quitting a job or like breaking a bad habit or, you know, really transforming your experience of life. I made a video about how I don't smoke weed anymore. And to be clear, y'all, I do still smoke sometimes. It's just not a habit, you know? So now I basically only smoke socially. So in the last like 
seven months, I've went to two different parties and smoked at them, and that's basically it for me. It's cool because the effect isn't as strong because through the healing work, my normal vibration is a lot higher. And someone left a comment on one of those videos and they they literally couldn't believe it. They were like, I don't believe you're not high because you have so much joy and so much energy. And that really struck me because I was like, oh, sometimes the programming can be so deep around what's possible for us as human beings and the amount of light and energy that is possible for us to embody that when we see someone who is just shining very bright, we can't help but think, well, there's gotta be something going on <laughs> because that's not normal. But actually, that is what we are each capable of. And that takes me to the next point around healing and how it can transform you, which is that you love being in your body. You love being where you are. You love being in this present moment. And because so much of transformation is a result of being present, you then get to see this life that becomes really beautiful. One way it's shown up for me is I used to be the kind of person who was always looking to move somewhere, <laughs> to live somewhere else. I actually rewatched the video where I talked about leaving LA and I was like, oh, I want to be the kind of person who's living here and living there. Not thinking anything of that, like not really understanding what that meant on an energetic level that I was like, staying still feels really uncomfortable. I need to constantly be on the move. So if you're the kind of person who in your life you find that you have trouble just kind of being where you are and you're always thinking about the future or the past, you always think about what you have to do next, you're always very busy in your mind, you're always overthinking, that's a sign that it's very uncomfortable to be in your body. And so the wise reaction your body is having is to run away and go be somewhere else. I live in Maryland now, y'all, and I seriously think that I'm going to stay in Maryland. <laughs> like when I move out of my sister's spot, I think I'm gonna stay here in Maryland because it's beautiful. Of course, it's always been beautiful, but what's different is that I am more comfortable in my body because the energy of all the pain that was stuck in my body, I've been able to release it layer after layer after layer. And so you see the physical discomfort of being in your body show up in your actual like skeleton. <laughs> so if you're the kind of person who like is very tense all the time and so your shoulders are always up here and you're always kind of crouched together like this because you're in that protection mechanism space, that creates this way of of being that literally if you would connect to like a hunched old man or woman because that's their whole life of like always having to protect themselves. And so the energy of someone who has healed and released a lot of stuff is just kind of naturally more relaxed and flowy and free. And like when you see children move in their bodies, they're just like free and wild and they just have this comfort in moving because they know that they're safe. When you are in your body and you really genuinely love being here, you want to take care of it. No one has to tell you what you have to do. You like how it feels when you are strong. You like how it feels when you can move. And so it doesn't become this thing where like, oh, I have to do exercise. I have to do cardio. I have to do yoga. It's like, no, I want to. And when I go a couple days without doing it, I kind of miss it. It's the same with things like sleep, right? Like we know getting a good night's rest, restoring our body and giving it a chance to like regrow the cells and stuff. We know that supports our body. But if we're really stressed and we're like, overthinking and we're like going through all of our mistakes and our regrets in our mind at night or we're like stressing about the thing we have to do at work tomorrow or like the conversation we have to have with someone if those are things that are running in our mind while we're trying to sleep that's going to affect the kind of sleep we get all of these things are all interrelated right and there's a reason why you can't sleep and there's a reason why you don't want to exercise there's a reason why you don't feel called to eat food that feels good to your body and it's all tied to you don't feel like your body is worth pouring into and so it's not natural for you to do these things. And the reason why you don't feel that is because at some point you were taught that. And so the process of healing is really this process of unlearning these lies about your value and your worth and remembering the truth of who you are and the power that you naturally have and the possibility to create a life that you really, really love. And so I want to share like a brief version of what the process looks like. With my coaching clients, I tend to do like a deeper version of this and we do it like in real time because the power really comes from action doing the practice, not just knowing that it's something you can do intellectually. But the brief version is to truly just, as you are living your life, you don't need to like set time aside. As you are living your life, stuff is gonna come up. You're gonna get an email that makes you feel a certain way. You'll get a YouTube comment that makes you feel a certain way. You'll have a conversation with somebody that makes you feel a certain way. And instead of just being in that reactionary place, you'll pause and you'll be like, oh wait, I'm feeling a kind of way. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you make the connection from this emotional feeling to where it lives in your body. Something maybe in your shoulders or in your heart. You might feel it in your stomach. You might feel it in your head, in your eyes. We hold these memories and these experiences all over the place, right? Once you make that connection between this feeling that's coming up and where it's in your body, you literally just give it permission to be there. That's the whole magic is you tell yourself it is okay that you feel this way. Because in the time it happened, probably it was not okay for you to actually feel that feeling and so you had to suppress it. And your energy, instead of it being spent creating something, being in the world, doing a dance class, talking to friends, like living a life that you really love, that energy is taken and it's spent squashing and holding down uncomfortable feelings. And so just the process of saying, hey, you have my permission to be here, the feeling is like, ugh. That's all I wanted all along. And then it will naturally release. It could be in tears, it could be in shaking, but it'll somehow physically leave your body. And then you'll get this renewed hit of energy. And then, this is important to note, the next time <laughs> something happens that kind of makes you feel a certain way, chances are it's gonna be something that was even deeper. And that means that the process you'll have will be even bigger, but you'll be able to handle it because you'll have more energy, the energy that you got from that last process. So it is a deepening and it goes as deep as you want to go, but the result is that every time you get more and more and more energy to the point where people are like, there's no way you just have that much energy. You must literally be on drugs. <laughs> and you're like, no baby. I literally woke up like this. I woke up like this and I put on some mascara and that is the version of me that you see. And that's what's possible for you, right? I'm not special, right? <laughs> like I just did this process work consistently and now I'm showing up in this way. I did not always get compliments on my energy. This is a relatively new phenomenon. And it's really cool because I do these free coaching calls with people and if you want, you can schedule yours in the description box and I'll literally be able to see where people's energy is and I can, it's like I can see the effect of like their energy being suppressed after all this time. Here's one thing that kind of blew me away when people who are further along in their healing journey would meet me and would really like get to the root of what I was going through. I thought it was so shocking because I thought I was doing such a good job of hiding it and hiding on my pain and I realized like people can always see. So you're really just hiding it from yourself because the people around you, and I know you know this because I know you know people in your life who you look at them and you like, ooh, this person is going through it, but that's their business. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pray for them. That's how for the stuff that we don't see yet, people are looking at us like, I'm gonna have to pray for Chimdi. <laughs> Is she really going through it? Is she putting it on YouTube too? And I'm like, listen, it's for the people. All right, it's a service. Thank you, Patreon people, by the way. I love y'all so much. I'm having a lot of fun I'm going live again. And so hopefully I'll make that a monthly thing. No promises though. We let the spirit lead us all the time. All right, love y'all, bye.